Greetings, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, Professor of Physics at Luther College, bringing you the next in our series of What to Look For in the Night Sky. This time we're talking about the week of July 11th, 2022. So I thought this week we'd took, take a look back, so, so we toggle back to think about the planets and the moon. We haven't talked about the planets and the moon for a few weeks now. And so the, the week will start on Sunday night, the 10th, into the morning of the 11th. So starting about 11 o'clock, on Sunday night, the 10th, uh, into the first few hours of the morning of the 11th. So Monday morning, the moon is going to be very near bright orange star Antares and Scorpius. So a great chance to get out and, and look at the stars of Scorpius. Pay a little bit of attention to them if you haven't before. The moon's only about two and a half degrees away from Antares, so that's really a fantastic pairing. That's just a beautiful, beautiful look at the moon and a very bright star. So we'll start the week there. So what's going to happen? This is a full moon week. This is not a great week. This is one of the reasons we toggle back to this. Is, you know, the moon's a little bit less interesting when it's full than when it's got, uh, a, a, you know, it's half full. And you can see the craters and stuff a little bit better. The shadows are a little longer. Uh, you're not looking at the noonday sun on it where you don't get much shadow. And so it's a little bit more interesting to look at the moon itself at another time. But when the moon's this full, it washes out so much other stuff in the sky, it's hard to see some of the things we've been talking about the last couple of weeks. So this is a good opportunity for us to, to talk about the moon moving by some bright stars and think about bright stars. And Antares is certainly one of those. So Sunday night into Monday morning, enjoy that view. Now Antares sits behind these three stars in the head of Scorpius. And the topmost star, Antares is the alpha star, the bright star in Scorpius. The topmost star is the beta star in Scorpius, and it's sometimes called uh, Graphius, sometimes called Akrab, and sometimes you'll see those things slapped together called Akrab, Akrab Graphius. And no one really seems to know what that meaning is. You know, we go to uh, we we go to Alan's uh, star names a, a lot to to think about the names, where the names of these stars came from, and he he, he kind of says. Eh. Uh, maybe crab is what this means, but maybe not. We don't know for sure what the history of that name is. But this beta star is a is a bright double star. So you got your telescope out. It'll hold up well with the full moon, nearly full moon. So full moon, we could, the moon's only about 90% full to start the week. It's going to fill out, and then it's going to start to to ebb away and wane away and become less full. So it's starting here about 90% full as we start Monday morning, and it's it's bright. But uh, the star, the double star, will hold up to it. So take your telescope, pop to this top star and the three stars of the head of Scorpius, and enjoy really a big, beautiful, bright double star. I think their separation of the two stars is about 14 arc seconds, which is really easy to resolve. So just about any telescope you have should be able to pull those apart into two just beautiful stars. Now there's a third star there that's much, much closer to that double system. And I don't remember what it is right now. It's it's moving, uh, maybe, it, but it's maybe an arc second or less. I, I don't think you'll probably be able to see that third star in the system. But there is a third star in that system. The bright star, uh, the brighter star of the two in the pair that you can pull apart, is itself a binary star. It's a spectroscopic binary star. It's got a period of about seven days. Uh, you can see them. You can see the spectra lines, dark lines in the spectra. So stars have dark lines in their spectra. You know, except Wolf Rye stars, but that's a topic for a different day. And so stars have bright line, dark lines in their spectra, and you can see these dark lines moving around due to the Doppler shift in this particular system. And just so you can tell, there's an orbit of about uh, just under seven days right there. So the multiple star system, kind of, kind of fun to look at that and realize uh, what's going on in there and enjoy that view of that double star. So moon there next to Antares to start the week. Now the whole week slides by. The uh, in the middle of the week. Uh, Wednesday night, uh, the moon is going to be, Wednesday morning, the moon is going to be close to Pluto. Uh, but Pluto is so hard to see, we're not even going to worry about that. We're just going to let, let the moon pass, slide right by Pluto. And by the end of the week, so the night of the 15th into the morning of the 16th, so we're talking about Friday night into Saturday morning here, the 15th into the 16th, the moon will have moved and closed in on Saturn. And it's only about six degrees, half a fist width at arm's length, arm's length uh, sort of south and east of Saturn 
here. Saturn is sitting right above the Neb al -Gedi. We've talked about this a hundred times in the last year. So Saturn's pretty close here to the Neb al -Gedi. The moon, the moon will have, the moon starts here about 90% full. It will have filled out and now it's waning away and it's about 90% full again when you're looking at it Friday night into Saturday morning as it sits below Saturn. That's a really fine current. You get a chance to get out and I love, the Neb al -Gedi is a pretty bright star uh, in Capricorn. And so I, I love that that uh, sort of pairing of the pairing with the Neb al -Gedi. So you got the moon, Saturn, and this star right there. I think it should make for a very nice view this week. Now, while you're there, you might as well go ahead and look at the planets too. A couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, there was a lot of talk about the, the great alignment of the planets and how rare it was and all of this stuff. And if you've watched this, this video series, and I know you have, I, I, I know you're watching it all the time, you probably got the sense that I wasn't particularly impressed. That was, you know, it was impressive, but not necessarily as much as people were making it out to be. For me, the planets were just a little bit too spread out to, to be a really, really good alignment of the planets. The planets are always aligned. That, that's what it means to be in a flattened plane across the sky. And they were bunched up a little bit, but there was quite a bit of spread between Saturn and Jupiter and Jupiter and Mars. Now, a little bit earlier in the month, last month, uh, Mars and Jupiter made a pretty nice pairing. I like, I like my gatherings of the planets a little more bunched than what we had here uh, recently is, is, is what that is. But they're still put on a pretty good show and they're still doing it right now. The rest of the world's moved on and stopped talking about it, but you can still go out and you can see this and, and say that Saturn is about 44 degrees from Saturn on over into Jupiter. So that's a pretty big stretch. That's, again, one of the reasons I wasn't going all in on this particular grouping of the planets is to say you got 44 degrees across there, that's half a right angle. There's your, there's your right angle, right? So you see me here making a right angle, it's half a right angle like that is 44 degrees. So it's a pretty big, so you, you point uh, straight south and you point to the one horizon, it's halfway across from straight south to the horizon uh, from Saturn to Jupiter. So that's a, a pretty big spread there. It's about 30 degrees from Jupiter on over to Mars. So 30 degrees, maybe three fist widths at arm's length like that that you can see. So this is, a, you know, so, so you've got about 44 degrees, about one and a half times as far from Saturn to Jupiter, from Jupiter on into Mars. So as it starts to get close to daylight, as you start to get a, about, uh, you know, you're thinking about, uh, you know, three in the morning, let's say this is, oh, this will be an okay thing, 3.30 in the morning. Uh, this is a pretty good thing to watch. This is all week. Uh, we're talking about it Saturday morning because that's when we were seeing the moon go by Saturn. But but it, earlier in the week it works as well. So uh, you've got this this great triplet of planets. Venus is going to come up a little bit later. So you wait another hour and, and you'll get Venus rising into the sky. And so Venus is 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 on out this direction. You can't see it on the board out here uh, right now. So 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 th that's all great. Now one of the things we want to point out is Mars, if you go 30 degrees from Jupiter to Mars, it's about another 30 degrees. So again, 3.30 or 4 in the morning, you want to go out and look for this to Aldebaran. And Aldebaran, eye of the bull, in Taurus. Taurus is such a winter constellation. I don't know about you where you are right now. Uh, again, for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere, it's, win it's a winter constellation. It's summer for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere right now and I, I don't know where you are watching this uh i, I hope it's, it's it's pleasant and enjoyable wherever you are but it's very hot right now very very hot it's it's the dog days of summer where, where i'm recording this and so to think about the ability we do this we talk about this quite a bit to think about our rotation and our revolution how we move in orbit and how we rotate and how that allows us to see big chunks of the sky on any one night here in the middle of summer we can start to see Aldebaran, which we associate with winter, late fall and winter so much here, uh, start to rise. Aldebaran's a nice orangish red star, good companion with to Mars. It's, it's, it's good to see Mars. Go, if you can do this, you can go Saturn to Jupiter to Mars to Aldebaran on out there and start thinking about, okay, the years just keep rolling by. That's what they do, right? They just keep rolling by, and here we are rolling on into another fall or winter with Aldebaran rising there. So enjoy that, everybody. This is what we got for you. We've got the moon sliding by, uh, starts near Antares, ends the week close to Saturn, and that gives us the opportunity to see where the planets are right now and to realize that Aldebaran in Taurus the Bull is rising here in July and, and starting to, to make a good alignment with these planets. Have a great week, everybody. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. I hope you have clear skies, and we'll have something more for you next week.